So you're familiar with Ansible, but you may have recently discovered an offering called Ansible Tower from the company Red Hat. And you may have also figured out that that is just an open source software called AWX Tower with Red Hat's logo slapped on top. So first I wanna start off by saying Red Hat and their products are great. I use them and I love them. And Red Hat did not steal AWX. Actually, it's the other way around, right? Ansible Tower existed before AWX. And then with their commitment to making things open source, Red Hat said they were going to make Ansible Tower open source and they created the AWX community project. Um, and in which they state it's the upstream version of Ansible Tower. So all the new things go to AWX first and then they get hardened and secured and made uh, long-term support by Red Hat and put into Ansible Tower. Uh, and they do say on their question uh, and answer website that it's comparable to Fedora being the upstream version of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And they do have a section where they say, should I use this in production? Uh, and they say just no. So you're wondering if you should use Red Hat Ansible Tower or AWX and what are the differences? Well, the differences are if we go with Red Hat Ansible Tower, right? We get AWX, but the logo is changed to a Red Hat logo. The Red Hat offering called Ansible Tower also comes with a support agreement, right? We purchase it through them. If something does not work the way we expect it to, we can call them up, we can submit a ticket. If my production environment's down and I need Ansible Tower to work in order to fix it, I can have them on the phone in 10 minutes, right? And if you're not aware, Red Hat has said they will be doing away with and replacing Red Hat Ansible Tower with what's called the Automation Controller, which is part of their new Red Hat Ansible Automation Control platform. So they're gonna have a whole platform, it's gonna have a hub, and you're gonna have what's called the Automation Controller in it, and it's going to look exactly like Red Hat Ansible Tower, and it's going to operate the same as Red Hat Ansible Tower. So here I am on the login screen for AWX. I'm not gonna show you how to install AWX. Uh, there's multiple ways to do that. You can do AWX operator in a container, a Helm chart on Kubernetes, whatever you want, right? That's for another time. This is just, once I get into AWX, once I get into Ansible Tower, how do I use it? How do I put things together? How do I start running playbooks, right? And I say Ansible Tower as well because everything you do in AWX is a one-for-one -one swap with Ansible Tower. Everything is exactly the same. It has exactly the same features. Uh, the only thing that might look different is the UI, but it's all gonna be in the same place for the most part. So I'm just gonna go ahead and log in here. And I'll put a link in the description uh, to how I tech personally deploy AWX over and over and over using uh, Terraform. Um, but once we get to the dashboard, we see some values up here, you know, uh, hosts is how many hosts we have in AWX. How many failed hosts means you ran a playbook, but it failed to run the, all the tasks successfully against those hosts. So you got a failure, inventories, inventory sync failures, and that increments when you have a dynamic inventory that looks through EC2 or a satellite server or Azure or vSphere to dynamically update its inventory and that just failed. Or project sync failures, meaning you had a project that you defined and it failed to sync from a remote source. And we'll go over that more in detail. I, but I wanna go over these things. I'm not gonna go down the list, straight down the list, but I'm gonna go in a logical order, what makes sense from the time you first stand up Ansible Tower or AWX. So first, when you stand up AWX or Ansible Tower, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is create an organization. So over on the left, click organizations, and you're just gonna hit add. And organizations are just a form of tenancy, right? <clears throat> They're a way of separating resources based on organization. So if you had an organization called McDonald's, right? And you created inventories and users and credentials and projects and so on, they would be available to the McDonald's organization. But if you created a Burger King organization too, their resources would be separate from the McDonald's resources. So one organization cannot view or execute another organization's resources if they don't have permission to do, right? By default, they don't, right? You don't have to worry about instance groups and you don't have to worry about Galaxy credentials unless you want Ansible Galaxy. So I've created an organization. Um, and now once it's created, I can go to access, right? I can say which users belong to my organization, which teams, which are like a logical grouping of, or, of users, and I can create notifications, right, for this organization. And we'll go over notifications in more detail later. 
But if I go back to organizations, I'm actually going to create another one. And I'm going to call it Burger King. And I'm going to hit save. And so now I've got two organizations, right? So if I create resources and assign them to McDonald's, and I create resources and assign them to Burger King, they're not going to be able to see or react, interact with each other's resources unless, say, I put Timmy in McDonald's, uh, and then I say, I want Timmy to also have access to Burger King. Then he can do both. Next, we're going to go ahead and go over inventories. So come here on the left, and we'll hit Add, and we'll see two options here. We have Add Inventory or Add Smart Inventory. So the differences here are if I hit Add Inventory, I can create a static or a dynamic inventory where I can add hosts, right, and variables for those hosts. And Add Smart Inventory, all this is is we are saying, so if I click in here real quick, quick example, I'm not going to go over this in true depth because it gets kind of complicated, but we have this Smart Host Filter option, right? So I can say, I want this inventory to be created from another inventory when the hosts match this filter, right? So if I give you an example, I say I have a McDonald's inventory and I go ahead and I say, I want to create another inventory based on the subnets of those hosts in that inventory. Ansible is going to go ahead and when I run a playbook, it's going to gather all the facts from, well, if I have gathers facts set, it's going to gather all the facts from those hosts. It's going to pull back all the subnets that all those hosts are in. And based on this filter here, it's going to create a new inventory with all the hosts in the defined subnet that I want, right? It's, it's a little complicated, I know. Um, but for the most part, just starting out, you're going to want to go to add inventory, right? And you're giving the inventory a name, similar to if you were naming your inventory file if you were using Ansible via the command line. So this is going to be McDonald's inventory. And you can give it a description, but I'm going to go ahead to organization. And again, we have two organizations. So if I choose McDonald's as my organization, Burger King is not going to have access to this inventory. They're not going to be able to see it or run things against it. And users in Burger King's organization will not be able to as well. So I'm going to go ahead and select. And you don't need insights credential or insights groups. And variables is where if you want a variable to apply to every host inside of this inventory, this is where you would place it. Similar to if you were to apply a variable to at the top of your inventory's file using Ansible CLI in the inventory file. So I'm going to hit save. And then we have all these options that appear, right? Access, who's allowed to have access to uh, this inventory? Groups. If we have 10 hosts, right? Multiple hosts, 10 hosts, each in different regions, maybe east, west, north, south, we can separate them this way. Um, Hosts is where we're going to actually put our hosts sources. Um, so this is actually dynamic inventory. So if you were to choose like Amazon EC2, it would ask you for your like your AWS credentials, um, and then it would actually like update dynamically uh, during playbook runs. So we'll go back to there and completed jobs that involve this host. So I'm going to go to host. I'm going to hit add, and actually you can add a host here with a valid DNS name right, if it's got a valid DNS name, or you can do IP address. So I've got an AWS EC2 instance sitting out there on the internet, and I'm actually going to use the IP address and give it a description, EC2 instance, and I can set specific host variables. So these would apply only to this host if during a playbook run. So, and if you don't know how hierarchy works with Ansible, it's always the most more specific declaration of a variable that gets applied. So I'll go ahead and hit save. So now I've got a McDonald's inventory with hosts, and I've got my host to find. So once you've added a host to your inventory, uh, before you can actually connect to it, you need to tell Ansible or AWX how to actually connect to that host. So we need to create what's called credentials, uh, and we need to create more specifically a machine credential type. Uh, and this is essentially where you're going to specify what user do you want to SSH with when Ansible runs a playbook, and what credentials do you want to use to connect uh, do you want to escalate via sudo or just switch user? And what credentials do you want to accomplish that, right? So this is going to be my AC2 uh, key. We can give it a description. Again, we give it an organization for separation. Machine type credential again for SSH. And I know that the user on this server is just called Ubuntu. And I don't need a password uh, because I'm going to be using SSH private key. When I created the EC2 instance, uh, AWS provided me with a private key for the key pair. I don't need to provide that. 
I don't need to provide that because there is no password for the private key. Uh, privilege mode escalation, I'm gonna go ahead and do sudo. Escalation name, I'm actually gonna go up to root. It's not recommended to do this, but I set this box up quickly just for this demonstration. So that's all I have right now. And then the password for that root user is gonna be the password that I set. And then I go ahead and save. So now I have a credential. Again, you can choose who has access to this credential. So now that I've got this credential created, what this is gonna let me do is when I go ahead and later and create a template, which is a, a playbook run configuration, I'm going to say I wanna use the EC2 key, SSH key, during to run this playbook and it's going to then use that key to attempt to connect to the host that i've defined in the playbook but before we can do that i need to add another credential here because we need to create what's called a project so before i can create the project i need to add uh, git credentials so we'll say git we'll give it a description and mcdonald's will be the organization so i'm going to choose where is it github personal access token so what I'm doing is I'm creating a credential to allow me to pull from GitHub. Um, so what I can do is I'll then go to GitHub and I have a little repository right here. Uh, you don't need the credentials if you don't need the credentials to connect, right? So technically I don't have to fill in the token here because I don't need to authenticate via token to pull in this repository. But if you wanted to, you would go to settings and then you would go down to developer settings and personal access tokens. And you could create, you could generate a new token here, right? So I'm actually going to grab this token real quick. All right, so I got the token. I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in here and I'll hit save. And I did not show you the token because I don't want to. So. Again, we have access, who has access to this credential. And we go back to credentials. Now we have two credentials, right? We have SSH key and get access personal access token. All right, so next we'll go to projects. So projects, projects, what are projects? Projects are kind of like, uh, you're kind of defining the space that all your playbooks and everything that's required to run those playbooks exist, right? So for example, if we choose manual here for source control credentials type, um, basically if we put our playbooks in this directory, manual points at a directory, right? So if we put our playbooks in this directory, uh, then they're going to show up under the manual project. This is unadvisable because you don't have any versioning control over it. So the next most popular option is to use git. Uh, so you can use any type of source control management system, right? You could use but Bitbucket, GitLab, GitHub, whatever you want, because Git's just the protocol. So then I would give it a name, right, for the new project. So roles, playbooks, right? I'm going to give it an organization. All right, and then I need a source control URL. So if I go to GitHub and I find a repository with playbooks in it that I would like to run, right? For my example, I have a repository here called Ansible Roles. It's just a simple playbook uh, right here called Configure Systems. And all it's gonna do is run the mode of the day role to set the mode of the day on the host. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna copy the HTTPS URL. I'm gonna go back to AWX and I'm gonna paste that in there. Then I'm gonna define a branch that I would like to pull from source control respec you don't have to worry about source control control credential this is where you would actually place um, your git credential uh, but for some reason for me anyway it's not working um, properly right please add to populate list I don't know why this is not showing up it might be an error with the particular version of AWX I'm using but if you needed to provide a personal access token for Git, this is where you would select it after you've already created it over here in credentials like we did earlier. Because this is a public repository, I do not need a personal access token to just pull it down. Okay, I just wanna make it known for the record. Um, earlier I said that for some reason my Git credential was not showing up when I went to project and attempted to click source control credential. Uh, apparently it's there now. Um, so just know 
that <laughs> if the repository is public and allows you to pull without authentication, then you don't need a source control credential. But if you do in AWX, it might take a few minutes for that credential to populate uh, under your, to be usable with your project. And one of the important things here is you're gonna wanna update revision on launch, right? And what this means is every time I run a playbook that belongs to this project, every time I run a template that belongs to this project, it's gonna, it's gonna run a job before it runs my playbook. It's gonna run a job to check in with GitHub and pull in the latest playbooks from GitHub. So I'm gonna hit save. Uh, and then again, we have access, who has access to these, uh, this project, notifications, job templates, which templates are like assigned to this project, schedules. Um, you can assign schedules to this project. We'll go over that later um, and details, right? So we're gonna hit sync here and you're not gonna see anything happen. It's gonna look really weird. Well, if we go to jobs, this is where we see things happening with projects and templates, right? So we can see that we've got this green here, which means uh, that it was successful in syncing our inventory with GitHub, right? So what it did is again, without credentials, it went ahead and reached out to the Git repository and looked at the version and then pulled it in. And it saw that it didn't need anything from Galaxy, so it didn't go ahead and do that. Update source tree if necessary, update project using Git, cool. All right, so that's been successfully defined. So now once we have a project, which again is a location to where our playbooks are stored, we need to create what's called a template. So we have two options here, add job template or add workflow template. So a job template is just, you're saying, I want to run this one playbook with these one set of settings and that's it. A workflow template is you're saying, I want to run this job with this playbook and then if that passes or fails or regardless of the result, run this one and then run that one. So it's a continuous workflow of multiple templates. So we're gonna go ahead and add, hit add job template. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a name, configure mode of the day, right? Because that's what my playbook is going to do. I can give it a description, job type run or check, right? Run is actually gonna execute it. Check is just gonna do like a dry run. And then I have to specify inventory. Uh, so we're going to take what inventory is the host that I've defined in the playbook contained in. So I'm going to go ahead and choose McDonald's inventory. So I'm actually going to stop there real quick and I'm going to go back to the project. So this is the playbook that's actually going to run and I need to make sure this host section contains a valid host name or group of hosts um, that actually exist in the inventory, right? So if I go back to AWX here, uh, the inventory, I've got a host. So I'm gonna copy this address and I'm gonna go back to the project. I'm actually just gonna do a no-no and I'm gonna update this right here in GitHub and I'm gonna commit straight to master and all fine and dandy. Um, so now if I define this inventory, right? Ansible is going to see this line. It's gonna say, hey, I wanna run against this host. And then as long as I have defined that host inventory right here, it's gonna work. All right, then we have to choose a project for this template. We've only got one, the roles playbook project we created. And what that project did when it synced is it evaluated the entire repository for a valid uh, playbook, right? Uh, configure systems.yaml. Um, we're gonna provide credentials and these are gonna be the EC2 key credentials, right? So we're gonna hit okay. So this is the, how we're gonna SSH into the box. Uh, labels, if we've got labeling going on in our play, playbook, we can go ahead and set our labels here. So we'll only run the tasks with the defined labels. Variables, uh, we've got forks, which is really how many hosts do you wanna run this against in parallel at once. Um, so if you don't have a lot of computing power, just leave this at zero. Limit, so limit's an interesting one, right? If I Say right here in the playbook, I define a whole group of hosts. Like it's got like a hundred hosts in the group that I put here. Well, I don't want to recreate like a new template or, or, you know, reinvent the wheel. So I could just put limit here and I could put host one, host two, 
and so on, and it would only run it against the host defined in limit. Verbosity, how verbose do you want this template to be? Uh, job slicing, we don't need to worry about that timeout. It is self-explanatory. You can show changes or not, right? So if enabled, show the changes made by Ansible tasks. We're supported this equivalent Ansible's diff mode. Uh, instance groups, we're not gonna worry about that. Job tags, uh, we're not gonna worry about that either. And skip tags, are there any tasks in your playbook you would like to skip? So the most important part of this is probably gonna be privilege escalation if you've got pseudo going on. All right, so if I look at the playbook, uh, become is set to yes, because I need to become to edit the mode of the day file. Uh, so that means I need privilege escalation enabled. Uh, provisioning callbacks, right? So this is going to allow the creation of a URL, a host can contact brand name and request a configuration update using the job template. Webhooks, so you can like, webhooks are like, if you put, uh, if you go to the host and you have this all set up, you could just like put a one line command that will interact with the API. And it'll essentially what you're doing with AWX and Tower is you're pushing configurations to the host. Enable webhook lets the host actually call out to AWX and say, I wanna run this template against me, right? Uh, can I run more than one job at once? Usually I'll set that to yes. And enable fact cache, fat en enable fact storage. All right, we're gonna hit save. So I now have a template, which is a play run of a playbook against an inventory so when I hit launch, I'm gonna it's gonna start two jobs. The first job is going to resync the project to make sure we have the latest and greatest from GitHub. And the second job is actually gonna run the playbook. So if I hit launch, and then I'm gonna open this in a new tab. Ah, we, so we can see that source control updated and then immediately after configure mode of the day ran, but it failed. Uh, so why did we fail? Well, this is a syntax error inside of the playbook. So error, the role mode of the day was not found. What did I do wrong here? So I got to fix this playbook real quick and then I'll be right back. All right. So the issue was my playbook was up here, but my roles were down here, one directly below instead of because your roles, if you haven't defined in your Ansible config where you want your roles to be, then they need to be relative to wherever the playbook is running right, in a roles directory, if that makes sense. So because this playbook isn't here, it's looking in the here for the roles directory, but it's not finding it. Um, but I moved it to here and the roles directory is right here. So now I need to go back to AWX and we're gonna go back to projects actually. And I need to actually update so we'll resync this because we made a change. And then we'll go to the template and we will edit that. So we'll hit edit to the new playbook, configure systems 2yaml We'll save and we'll launch. And now if we go back to jobs again, we should see configure mode of the day running. And success, we have successfully, actually it says no host match, could not match the supplied host pattern, ignoring servers. So why is it saying servers? This is a me issue again. So what do we have here? Um, host, ah, okay. I didn't edit the host name in the right place. By the way, this is a pretty crappy playbook to use as an example. I wrote it when I was first learning Ansible, uh, so it probably doesn't follow best practices, but it's gonna work for this example. Eventually, you'll see. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit relaunch, and it's gonna resync the project. So we'll go to jobs, and we got source control update because we made a change, configure mode of the day. Um, okay, cool. We've actually connected to our host. So we did have an error out here in the output. Um, fatal, could not find or access. That's that's just part of the Ansible Pro playbook I wrote that I said was crap. But the point is, we connected to the host, right? And because we didn't run successfully, uh, we failed, right? So actually, hang on, I'm gonna fix this real quick because I want you to see the green. 
All right, so the issue is like, here, I'll just, I had a, the full path, like when it was sitting on the system here. I told you these were old. Um, really the files just like one director down into files and motivate AJ2. I'll go ahead and commit real quick. And then we'll go back and we will relaunch one more time. And then of course, we're gonna update the repository information inside of AWX. So we get the latest and greatest for the playbook and we're gonna configure mode of the day. And voila, it is finished running. So successful playbook run. So templates again are just jobs where you define what playbook you want to run, what inventory source the hosts that you want to run against are in, what credentials do you want to use to connect to those hosts, and do I need to sudo, uh, stuff like that, All right? All right, now that we've done a successful playbook run, just to recap, right? All this stuff applies to Ansible Tower and AWX. Everything we just did, you can do in Ansible Tower the same exact way. Creating an inventory, creating credentials, creating a project, and syncing that project, creating a template, right? All of that is the same in Ansible Tower. You can do it the exact same way. So let's go over some of these other things here, right? So for jobs, what are jobs? Jobs are every time uh, a, a job, a playbook runs is a job. Uh, every time a task runs, right? So when source control updates for a project, that's considered a job. When you run a template, that's considered a playbook run, that's considered a job. You can go back through this history and you can click on them to see what happened. And you can see pass or fail based on the color here, red or green. So next we have schedules. And schedules allow you to say, well, we'll just walk through an example. It allows you to set an interval of when you want things to run. So if I want to run configure mode of the day every Sunday at 3.30 p.m., I would click on the template and I would go to schedules and I would hit add and I would give it a name Sundays at 3.30 p.m. So the start date and time is what time. So really this is I want to begin running this when at 3.30 p.m. on 10.10 is when the first one's going to run. And then every subsequent one after that is also going to run at 3.30 p.m., right? And you can choose those settings here. Uh, what time zone do you wanna tie this to? And then a run frequency, right? I wanna run this every Sunday, so I'll choose week, once a week on Sundays. And this is the equivalent of creating a cron job. And then when do you want it to end? Never, meaning it will run every week, every Sunday at 3.30 p.m after so many occurrences, right? Do you want this to run after it runs two Sundays, three Sundays, what have you, or do you want it to end on a certain date, right? So I'll just choose never and I'll hit save. And we can see I have a schedule created, right? So every Sunday at 3.30 p.m., I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna run the mode of the day uh, playbook or template. And there's my schedule assigned to this template. And you can turn it on and off with this button here. Uh, and then we have activity streams. This is just stuff that's happening inside your environment, who's creating things, who's destroying things, what's going on, what jobs are running, stuff like that. Uh, workflow approvals. This is gonna where it be where, remember how earlier I said you can add and create a workflow template, right? Um, so this is gonna be where you're going to approve workflows if needs, if the need be or deny, you know? Uh, we have users, so this is where we can add a user, right? So Bob, Bob at Bob.com, and uh, we can give Bob's password. Uh, yeah, we'll just copy that. I wonder if that works. Yep, uh, Bob, the the man, and we can assign Bob to an organization. So we'll decide if he needs what access to what resources and wait does he want to be a system administrator a system monitor we'll make him admin and we'll hit save oh uh we'll just make this password and we'll hit save uh so we created a user we can assign him into different organizations uh, we can add him to more than one we can assign him to teams which are kind of like and roles uh teams uh we can go ahead and add a team the team 
what team does this organization belong to or what organization does this team belong to, right? Uh, we can add Bob to this, but he's already added to it because he's an admin. Um, different roles for this team, right? So teams are groups of, so we have users, teams, which are like a group of users, and then you can create roles that kind of assign certain users to certain teams and give them certain access to certain things, right? Um, credential types, we don't need to worry about this, but you can uh, create your own kind of credential. Uh, notifications, this is actually a handy one uh, because say you've got a Slack or a Mattermost or something like that, or email, Grafana, right? You've got all these different things like webhook. Um, you can actually create these uh, and you can assign them to certain templates, right? So if I click on this, um, there's a notifications tab. You can have a notification when I run that says when this uh, particular template starts, send me an email, send me a Slack message. If it runs and fails, send me a Slack message. If it doesn't, don't send me anything. Um, stuff like that, right? So if we just hit add, we can see like Slack, we can add our, you know, what channels do you want this go to? What's the token? You can add a custom message. Um, you can specify if you want these messages to run on start, success, error, stuff like that. All good stuff. Uh, we got management jobs, uh, which seems to be blank. We have instance groups. Uh, so just real quick, instance groups are like, say you had like four Ansible Tower or AWX nodes running, you could group those into instance groups and you could apply custom policies. Like you can put two in this group, two in that group, right? Add container group, you can have, you know, it's just a way of, of grouping your uh, nodes and resources. Um, applications, you can go ahead and add applications here. Um, it's more of an advanced setting. Uh, and then settings, this is for your administrators, right? You can set up uh, authentication to like SAML, LDAP, right, SSO. Uh, you have logging settings, so you can define how you want your logging to be configured. Uh, miscellaneous system settings, um, you know, automation analytics, upload URL, login redirect. There's all this, you can get pretty fancy with the administrative stuff. And then user interface settings, custom logo, stuff like that. Um, but in AWX, it seems like, you know, this is coming soon. So, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, it's not, doesn't, we don't get it in AWX, but we might get it in Red Hat Ansible Tower. And then if we go back to the dashboard, we can see, um, you know, we don't have any failed hosts because our job ran successfully last time. And we have a good inventory and we have a successfully synced project and we have a nice little graph here.